Hello Acolytes, welcome back to Funguary. Today we're going to be discussing days 12 through 18. If you haven't seen parts 1 and 2, you can check them out in the playlist in the iCard now. Our first species that we're going to be talking about is the Ghost Mushroom. This mushroom is primarily found in South Asia and Tasmania, but it's also been reported in India. They're generally found growing in overlapping clusters on a wide variety of dead or dying trees. These mushrooms have fan or funnel-shaped bodies that are cream, brown, or red colored during the day. But the really cool thing about this mushroom is that it is bioluminescent. In low light conditions, the gills of the mushroom glow bright green. Sometimes it can also grow a bluish sort of green. This is caused by the enzyme luciferase, the same chemical that causes fireflies to glow, and the exact same chemical that causes bioluminescent fish to glow as well. There are over 80 species of bioluminescent mushrooms on Earth, but it's unknown why some of them glow. Scientists have determined that some fungi glow to attract insects to spread their spores. Obviously, the spores get attached to the insect's feet and they spread them all around. But this isn't the case for the Australian ghost mushroom. They just don't know why. <laughs> They've done some tests and some observations, and it makes no difference to the bugs whether or not this mushroom glows. Like most glowing mushrooms, ghost mushrooms are considered extremely poisonous and are not recommended to be eaten. They can cause serious digestive issues and even death, so don't eat them. So in my design of this mushroom, I really wanted to capture that rippled funnel shape. And I also wanted to capture the idea of her being a ghost. So I put her in a Victorian inspired gown that had a lot of ruffles and uh, ridges to imitate the guild shape of the mushroom. The most difficult challenge with this one was trying to figure out how to make it look like it's glowing. I'm not sure I fully succeed, you guys will have to let me know, but this is one of the illustrations that I had a lot different of a time working on. Most of them are pretty simply cell shaded uh, with pretty strong liner elements, and I do that to make them all look cohesive. But this one has a lot of soft blending, and I did that to try and make it look more like it was glowing, more like light was coming from within. I'm really not sure it succeeded. I think one of the main issues is that the majority of the dress is green, so you don't really have this relationship, right? Like, the reason something looks glowing is because it's put next to something that is not glowing. It's put next to something that is dark. And I'm not sure that this outfit fully achieved that look that I was going for. I do think the dress was a good choice for getting the guild effect. I'm just not sure it turned out all right with the mushroom. I am very happy with the transparency of the ghost. If you look closely at where her hands would be overlapping the fabric or her feet would be overlapping her shoes, you can see that she is transparent and that you can see her clothing through her body. So she does live up to the name of a ghost mushroom. But overall, I think she looks pretty good. So that is day 12 ghost mushroom. Day 13 is the Scytherella aquatica. This mushroom was discovered relatively recently in 2005, and because of that, there isn't really a ton of information out there about it. It's a really, really unique mushroom because it is the only species of guild mushroom ever discovered that fruits underwater. So the actual mushroom, the fruiting body, grows underneath the water. They grow submerged under fast running cold river water, but they can also be found growing out of waterlogged wood, silt, and gravel. The population of mushrooms on land was found growing in close proximity to those under the water. Primarily though, they are observed growing completely to maturity, fully submerged. The reproductive process of the Scytherella is unusual because most guild mushrooms spread by releasing spores into the air. So how would the Scytherella be able to spread its spores if it's underwater? The mushroom solves this issue using gas bubbles. So gas bubbles accumulate underneath the gills of the mushroom, and within those gas bubbles are the spores. And then the bubbles float to the surface, pop, and they spread the spores all around. Like any other species, fungi need to breathe, so the only populations of this mushroom are found in extremely oxygen-rich water. So obviously, for a mushroom that grows underneath the water, I had to do a character that was under the sea. 
and so I chose to do this cute little mermaid. I'm not sure if it's an actual property of the Scytherella, but the main photo that I kept seeing had these like almost glowing blue tips, so I decided to make her kind of an anglerfish. She's sort of just a very classic looking mermaid. There aren't a lot of very striking visual elements about this mushroom, and it's actually really difficult to find photos of it. I probably only found a handful of pictures, so it was really difficult to get reference for this image. But I leaned into that sort of brown, rich color for her skin and her hair being lighter than that as the, the cap of the mushroom is lighter. Other than that, my goal was just to make her look like a really cute mermaid. So that is Day 13, Scytherella Aquatica. Day 14 was probably one of my favorite drawings to work on. Day 14 is the witch's hat. This species can be found across North America, Europe, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. It grows super abundantly and is often found in large groups. This mushroom, like many others, has a sticky cap when juvenile, but as they age, the pileus dries out. Once dried, the pileus is smooth, classifying it as a wax cap mushroom. This fungus is one of the most commonly found wax caps across the world. These mushrooms are bright yellow, orange, and red as they grow, but they turn black with age or as a result of injury. All parts of the basidiocarp, the fruiting body, will turn black. This mushroom is generally not considered edible, they're really slimy and small, and the blackening effect is not really appealing. It isn't super well known if this mushroom is actually poisonous. Most guides list it as edible, but there has been one report of a poisoning. It's generally considered not worth the effort to try and eat this shroom. I love the little witchy girl that I got to draw for this prompt. I love witches. I think her little hat is so cute. I couldn't do a witch's hat mushroom and not make her hat a big focal point, but something else that I did emphasize, or at least tried to emphasize, was this blackening effect. So you can see that her outfit, the bottom of the skirt, does actually have this blackening effect moving into the red, and that was sort of just to imply the aging of this mushroom. The other thing that I thought was really important to capture was the bright gradient on her hat from this really bright yellow to a deep, deep, rich red that you can see in one of the reference photos. I thought that that was absolutely too cute. I thought working on her hair was super fun, all curly and wild and messy. I think she's really beautiful and I love her attitude. She was one of my absolute favorites to work on. I've really been trying to capture the sort of round shape of these mushrooms, and I think that I captured it in a few places here with her hat and her skirt, so keep an eye out and let me know if you think I did a good job or not trying to capture these mushroom shapes. That was day 14, Witch's Hat. Day 15 is the Bleeding Fairy Helmet. This mushroom is common and can be found growing in Europe, North America, Chile, Australia, and Japan. They appear in small clusters growing on the surface of decaying deciduous trees. The bleeding fairy helmet is referred to as a late colonizer fungus, meaning that the fruiting bodies only appear after the wood has been decayed by a white rot species. So the white rot comes in, softens up the wood, and then you can see the bleeding fairy helmets start to make their place. These are dry and rough to the touch, and the caps are dusted with a fine white powder. This fungus is also referred to as a burgundy drop bonnet, or the bleeding mycena, and it's fairly obvious why. When the surface of the mushroom is cut or broken, a dark red liquid latex bleeds from the wound. It's unknown whether this fungus is edible, they haven't been completely tested for toxins, and even if they are edible, it's hardly worth collecting them due to their small size. So obviously for the Bleeding Fairy Helmet, we had to throw in a little bit of blood, and I thought that doing this beautiful gladiator woman would be a great way to toss in a little bit of drama and a little bit of blood. So I have her standing strong, even though she is gripping this wound in her side. She's a very tough cookie. And I incorporated the shape of the mushroom into her helmet, because it's the Bleeding Fairy Helmet, and I tried to add in some of the droplets of the latex actually on the surface of the helmet. I thought doing a gladiator set of armor would be really interesting. It would allow me to draw some different textures with the leather and the metal. Rendering out the metal was really difficult. <laughs> I've rendered metal before, but it is definitely challenging when it's in a color you're not expecting. I think if I were to do this again, I would render the metal in a silver tone and then put a red color layer on top. That way I'd be able to render the metal relatively accurately 
and then still retain the bright colors of this fungus. I definitely had a hard time with the coloring of this one. I was just, I don't know, I was having a really difficult time differentiating different parts of the armor. I think it's because I don't draw armor very often, so I was having to really think about the armor itself and that left the colors a little bit on the wayside. But overall, I don't think she looks too terrible. And I also gave her some like bruises and busted her up a little bit. So she looks like she's been fighting. So that is day 15, Bleeding Fairy Helmet. Day 16 is the Ivory Funnel, also called the Fool's Funnel. This mushroom grows in small groups or fairy rings in grassy areas of Europe and North America. The most interesting thing about this fungus is how dangerous it is. It has no distinctive taste or smell, but if consumed, can be fatal. The ivory funnel contains deadly levels of muscarine, a toxin that acts like a nerve agent poisoning. It greatly increases salivation, perspiration, sweating, and lacrimation, tear flow, within 15 to 30 minutes of ingestion. This also gives it the nickname, the sweating mushroom. With larger doses, these symptoms can be followed by intense abdominal pain, severe nausea, blurred vision, and labored breathing. Death is quite rare from this mushroom. Symptoms usually pass within two hours. However, death can result from an arrhythmia or from respiratory failure in people who are more at risk. So when I thought of this mushroom being deadly and I thought of it being white, I really was interested in this sort of Snow Queen aesthetic because I think that's a really easy way to lean into this entirely white aesthetic to, is to go with the Snow Queen. However, I maybe kind of regret it a teeny tiny bit because looking at the images of the mushroom, it is actually more warm toned than one might assume by first hearing the name Ivory Funnel. So I'm not sure if I should have gone full Ice Queen or if I should have tried a bit more of like a granite aesthetic but I still think she looks really deadly and uh, really pretty. And I tried to achieve this funnel shape by using her big fur, fluffy fur coat. I do eventually go in and take off the part of the ball gown because I really did need to add weight to the top to make it look like this funnel shape. I think I maybe could have gone a little bit bigger with the coat. I think that probably would have looked quite nice and would have created an even bigger funnel shape. But I do really like how the fur coat turned out. I love drawing fur. I think it's so fun. I have these really, really nice fur brushes. And yeah, I just, I love it. I love it so much. Um, so expect maybe some more fur drawings in the future because I have ignited my passion. The thing that was sort of driving me a little bit crazy with her is that I really, really wanted to give her white eyelashes. I really tried to make them look good. For some reason to me, I don't know if it's just because I've been looking at it for too long, but for some reason to me, her eyes look upside down. <laughs> I don't know why that is. So I don't know. You'll have to tell me if I'm crazy. Tell me if I'm crazy in the comments below. But yes, I wanted to make her look deadly and cold and like she would absolutely kill you in an instant. So that is day 16, Ivory Funnel. Day 17 is Clathrus Archery, also known as the Devil's Fingers. This fungus grows alone in warm climates in Africa, New Zealand, and Australia, but it is invasive and it's starting to spread to other continents. This is an extremely striking looking fungus. It begins with an egg stage where the Clathrus forms a white ball. As it matures, red arms break through the surface and spread out. The tips of these fingers are often covered in a viscous black goo. The devil's fingers are part of a family of fungi that smell extremely foul, called stinkhorns. When this fungus reaches maturity, it smells like rotting flesh. The scent is used to attract flies who transport its spores. Clathrus archery isn't known to be toxic, but consuming it would be extremely difficult and entirely unpleasant due to the overwhelming rotting stench. So for this character, the shape of the Clathrus archery really reminded me of like an African head wrap. So I wanted to imitate that shape of the one that's sort of wrapped up. And then on the sleeves and the bodice of the dress, I have the ones that are more spread out and the ones that would be covered in this really icky, gross black goo. I really like this structured dress. I felt like I wanted something that spread out in a way that sort of looked like the tentacles without fully being the tentacles because I was going to put those on her chest piece and down her arms. I saw this really beautiful 
horror-inspired dress that had very similar bodice and arms that was absolutely gorgeous. And so I definitely wanted to imitate that. But the actual skirt part of the dress, I was a little bit more unsure on. I still don't know if I love it. I think it works pretty well with the spikes on her bodice. I think it uh, translates pretty well and brings everything together. But yeah, I was a little bit unsure on it and a little bit unsure of how to make it look more like the fungus itself. So I think the areas in which you see the fungus are definitely more in her head wrap and in the fingers sprouting from the sort of white ball of her bodice, hearkening back to that growing sort of maturing that the Clathrus does. So that is day 17, Clathrus Archery. Our last one for this video is day 18, the Amanita Galactica. So this species is also really, really new. It was discovered in 2014 in the Andes Mountains of Southern Chile. There also isn't a lot of independent information about the Amanita Galactica specifically. So some of this information is directed more towards Amanitas as a genus. This fungus typically grows in small groups at the base of the Chilean monkey puzzle trees. Amanita galactica is named for the bright white spots on the black mushroom cap, so it looks like a galaxy dotted with stars. This species has a veil over the cap when they are immature that is torn as the mushroom matures. The remnants of this veil are often found growing around the stem. This is a super ancient species of mushroom. It can be traced back more than 180 million years to before the supercontinent Gondwana drifted apart. Some species of Amanita mushrooms are poisonous to humans, but it's unknown if this species is toxic. It's too new to have been fully tested. For this character, I was definitely thinking a goth vibe. All we got is black and white. She's gotta be a classic goth. And I was trying to think, how do I get these little white spots, these stars distributed onto her dress? So I gave her this bodice, this top of the dress that has a very flowery, flowy pattern on it that I'm going to do in white. So that creates this spotted pattern. I also decided not to go with this big skirt to trim it down to more of a small one to hearken back to that veil that grows on the mushroom but then sort of disintegrates as it gets older. This is sort of the remnant left around the stem. I really love her hair. I gave her like Bellatrix Lestrange hair. That's sort of what I was inspired by but it's like super messy and kind of grungy and wispy. I, I really love her character design. I think she's super gorgeous and I also think she's really striking because she is just entirely in grayscale. The only thing that is any color on her body is her blush which is slightly blue she she really does look like a like a grayscale character and i think that's fascinating i also made the skirt that is around her sort of transparent because i thought it would be fun uh, so she's got like a little bodysuit on underneath and you can see her legs through the skirt i also hearkened back to that black and white pattern on her high socks so you can see that I went in and added a little bit of white to the spaces in the pattern on her socks. I also streamed a few of these drawings on Twitch. If you'd like to follow me on Twitch, my username is Afterplague. I will probably be streaming after this video goes up. Uh, so if you want to check me out, come follow me on Twitch. I would love, love, love to interact with you more over there. So that is Amanita Galactica. And with that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching Funguary Part 3. We are getting so close to the end. We only have 10 days left. So I'm really excited to get the rest of these done and share them with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of what I'm working on, follow me on all my social media. I am Afterplague on Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube, and I am After underscore Plague on Twitter. I hope to see you back for the next Funguary video, and I hope you survive this post-plague world.